Hey everybody, did you know you can go to ColinMullen.com in order to get art and art prints? It's why I talk about it every single time, and considering the content of this video, you might, you know, agree with me, and if you do, you should go and get prints, because, um, it's physical and a bunch of other things that go into effect here in a minute. But anyway, ColinMullen.com. So, um, first off, I'm just gonna real quickly talk about this painting. Uh, it's a sequel, or a, uh, it's part of the same series, there you go, the proper art terminology of uh the last week's uh video uh that was of my cat abby this one is of my cat herman we have two um and my wife has claimed both of the originals so i, I won't be selling them but the prints will be available so that'll be a thing um let's talk about concept art real quick i need to define it i feel like first because a lot of people um I guess aren't aware of it so much the same as you have like surrealism and impressionism and realism stuff that you probably know about just as a layperson there's also concept art or conceptual art um art that is less of you know the actual paint on canvas or the sculpture being made but more the thought process that gets you to it maybe specific instructions on how you would go about doing a thing or the documentation of doing a thing and a lot of it came about as sort of um, a protest to the way that the museums at the time were curating art. Basically, they, they wanted to make sure that like it wasn't a thing that you could own. It wasn't something that was just for the elites that you know would be stored away in some uh, vault somewhere that people couldn't see. It was it was something that just could be described and you would understand. Uh, I'll talk about one I saw here in a minute. Um, but despite their best efforts in order to prevent people from being able to, you know, uh, own them, it turns out that, you know, eventually they were owned. These ideas on how to make things were owned. Um, and a lot of artists nowadays do work almost in this paradigm, sort of in a way. They, they have like a factory, a machine line of people who do the thing. So... They'll, they themselves will come up with an idea. For instance, a gigantic sculpture that, you know, takes up, you know, three stories of room and, like, half a, a city block or something. Like, massive work that one human being could not reasonably make. Um, and those people who work on the assignment are never really credited. It's usually just the artist who came up with the idea and, you know, was the foreman for the assignment. Sometimes it's even stuff like paintings. Large paintings will be, like, consigned out to other people to actually do the work, but they themselves are the idea men. And I have a visceral hatred towards idea men. Um, I feel like part of art is, is doing the work, and the, I guess the justification for this is, you know, when you hear someone like, I don't know, Britney Spears, to use a really old, outdated reference at this point, um, when you hear her sing a song, it's more than likely that she didn't write the song. Some other guy did, right? And then uh, she's credited, you know you know it as a Britney Spears song, but it's, it's his thing. And if you actually look on the credits, he's actually the one credited. Um, I feel like that would be a better way of doing it. She was obviously involved because she sang it, and she's, you know, a competent singer. Um, you can argue with me on that. But, you know, I, whatever artist you want to have in that spot. Um, I, I feel like the same sort of thing goes on with art, and should go on with art. That, like, yeah, they came up with the idea, but they shouldn't get the sole credit of it because they didn't go do the thing. Yes, that means that certain work is just unattainable for one person. I could not make a painting the size of, you know, a, a city block, probably by myself. I would have to have help. And so, do I take the credit for it? When, when do I have to start, like, crediting other people? This is something I had a problem with in art school. Like, this painting, I didn't stretch to the canvas myself. I didn't go out into the fields and get the linen, and I didn't... Um, grind the pigment myself. I bought pigment. I bought paint. I bought canvas from the store. You know, do I credit the store? Do I need to go credit Michaels? Do I need to credit Liquitex for being a part of this work? Do I need to go track down the person who did the work at the factory for the paint? Are the people who work on the statue, are they just sort of like the brush in this instance? 
See, I don't really have a good answer to this. And it's something that I want to discuss with you guys because I feel like it's an interesting concept. Um, speaking of concept art again, um, the most successful concept art that I ever saw was one that was shown at the Blanton, uh, it's a local museum here in Austin, Texas, and it was by Felix Gonzalez Torres, I think I'm pronouncing that right, um, and, uh, he'd done a piece that was a concept piece, you know, a concept art of, uh, just a pile of candy. And it was a certain number of pieces of candy, if I recall correctly, and they all had to be hard candy, they had to have specific colors, or something along those lines. There was a certain way that you had to design it. And the idea was that, um... It was to talk about how... He was gay. Uh, and it was to talk about how there was basically... I had always heard it as it was a reflection of his boyfriend at the time, and how his boyfriend was passing away due to AIDS, HIV, and that, you know, it was slowly deteriorating over time. Another understanding of this, according to Wikipedia, is that it was representative of the, um, at least the nation's ignorance or just not caring about um, the, the gay and queer community. And so once the candy is gone, that piece is just gone. It's just over. And... I thought that was powerful, but then immediately afterwards, I was upset because this piece originally debuted a long time ago, like in the 80s. Like, the original pile of candy is gone. It's gone. Like, and yet, for some reason, I was still able to go and see it in, you know, a full pile. Like, they added new candy to the pile. It completely changes the meaning of the work when you do that. And so this really powerful idea of that you can no longer go and see the original is kind of messed up because the new original existed in the Blanton for this one exhibit. It's just kind of sad. Like, despite the fact that there could be some validity to concept art, the, the fact that it has been owned? I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with this. What is your opinion of concept art, now that I've described it to you? What is your opinion of, you know, does the artist actually... Is the artist the person who comes up with the idea? A la, you know, someone who writes a song for a pop singer to sing? Uh, is... Does the artist need to be credited along with the guy who wrote the song? Sort of like that? Or is it a situation where it's just the idea that matters? Is the execution part of it? To me, I feel like the execution and the idea are part of it, but I want to hear your take and I want to hear why. Um, but I think that's all for me today. Let me go ahead and get on to thanking the people who make this uh, channel possible. This is probably going to get demonetized because I, I said the gay word and, um, you know, therefore it's going to be just, you know, YouTube's going to hate it. But Luckily, I don't depend on that for this channel. Um, I have some lovely, awesome people who support me on Patreon to talk about art and to do art and have been uh, pushing me in a really positive way to do more art, and it's made my life a lot better. So thank you to the following people. Thank you, Wapfu. Thank you, Theodore Corbier. Thank you, Spiral. Thank you, Spencer Kane. Thank you, Punkster. Thank you, Phalanxia Theore. Thank you, Oboist Kirby. Thank you, Mortibus. Thank you, Micah. Thank you, Maliciousness. Thank you, Lost Nevada. Thank you, Kayla Hollinger. Thank you, Holgen. Thank you, Geisuzan. Thank you, Duxu. Thank you, Daniel Rotwind. Thank you, Cappy Rose. Thank you, Bubba Fair. Thank you, Bep. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Adam Kearney. And thank you, Ants! Um, but again, thank you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Um, I know this is a bit of a heady one. Um, and I don't know if I really described my issue with this idea well enough. But um, it's one reason I really want to make sure that everything you see on this channel is me. Is that way, you know, when I credit it to me... It is me. The music, the painting, the idea, the, you know, stock images or whatever that I take 
Those are me. Um, but maybe I need to credit Liquitex and Michaels. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, I'll see you for the next one.